guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca and I am a stay at home mom and an online reseller. And today is going to be a how to video. I'm a member of a couple different reselling groups on Facebook and Instagram. And something I've been seeing a lot lately is people who I think are probably newer to reselling, um, but maybe they're not. Some people are just looking to see how people write their descriptions for their items when they're going to post them. So I thought I would make a video talking about how I do mine. And I thought hopefully it'll help some people out there who are trying to figure out how exactly to write a description. I'm first going to talk about how to write my title because I do put my title in my description as well. So it is kind of all together. And I will say that I sell on seven different platforms, I believe. <laughs> Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Curtsy, Kitizen, eBay, Etsy, Facebook Marketplace. Eight places. <laughs> so, and whatnot. But this doesn't really apply to whatnot because I do that a little bit differently since it's an auction type style. But um, I do my descriptions and my titles the same on all of my platforms. I start all of my listings on uh, Poshmark first, and then I manually cross list everything. I don't use a cross listing service or anything like that. So I'm doing it manually. But I start everything on Poshmark and then just copy paste to all of my other sites wherever the item can be listed. And I use the same format basically for uh, clothing, shoes, hard goods, anything like that. I do mostly sell clothing like items that are back here. And I also sell shoes mostly, but I do have some hard goods and it's a similar concept. Um, obviously it's just a little bit different and I can kind of get into that. So let's start with the title. So the title, I know that Poshmark has kind of had weird algorithm changes and whatever the case is about how you should write your title. This is how I write my title. It's how I've been doing it for the last three years and on my fourth year of reselling. And it's just, I think very, I mean, obviously, in my opinion, the way I do my title and description is very good because I think it is clear, it's fairly concise, but um, it gets the point across very easily, in my opinion. So obviously you can do things however you like. This is just the way I do it. So I have an item here that I'm going to use as my example item. They're very bright shorts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if I were listing this item, so this is pictures have already been taken and edited and everything and I'm um, starting my post. So I'm going to start off with first I will put the condition if it is new or if it is a vintage item. My very first word will either be vintage and then followed by the brand or if it's new. A lot of people type NWT or NWOT for new with tags or new without tags. I used to do that, but I don't do that anymore. And the reason I don't is because somebody who is not a reseller probably isn't familiar with what those um, acronyms mean. So I want that to be very clear as to what I am talking about. So this item is not new, but if this were new with or without tags, no matter, like I said, whether it has tags or not, I would type first in all capital letters, just the word new. So they know it's a new item. And then later in the description, I can talk about you know, if it's with tags or without tags. So for this item, it's not new with or without tags. It's just pre-owned and it is not vintage. So I would not put either of those. So this is the brand ILTM. I love Tyler Madison. So that is the first thing that I would type. So I would type ILTM. I would type that part first. Then I love Tyler Madison. And I'd say yellow pull on shorts. That's pretty basic, but I mean, that's what these are. They are a yellow, maybe I put bright yellow pull on shorts. And then I could, um, depending on how much space for how many characters I have left, I could say, um, you know, ILTM, I love Tyler Madison, bright yellow shorts, stretchy pull on, because these don't have any kind of closure, just pull on. And then I would say size, and I think these are an extra large. So yes, size extra large. So I would put that if it's a vintage item that has been made in uh, Japan is something a lot of people look for or made in USA. If it's clothing, um, I would also put USA or Japan or made in USA or made in Japan. So this item, I would say ILTM, I love Tyler Madison, bright yellow pull on um, shorts, stretchy 
you know, if you have more room, I could say what the inseam length is. I could say four inch size extra large. And that would be my title. So and hopefully that makes sense. But <laughs> I'll do some other items then to also give some better examples. So that would be my title. So the first thing I do for my description is I completely copy the title and I put that as my very first part of my description. That way it is right there. Whenever someone's reading the description, they can see exactly what the title says. And I think it also helps, um, I don't know, I feel like it helps me for any kind of cases that might be open, weird stuff like that that might happen if someone's trying to challenge something. I can be like, hey, it's in the description and it's in the title. It's, it's there twice, like the big main parts. This is a size whatever. This is this color. It's this brand. So that's kind of why I do that. And it's easy for me just to refer back to it that way as well. So I copy the title and then what I do is at the end, so I'd say, you know, my title would be ILTM, I love Tyler Madison, bright yellow pull on shorts, size extra large, in excellent condition. I would always add in good condition, in fair condition, in like new condition. Um, the only time I don't add a condition is if I put that it was new at the very beginning. So if it was new at the very beginning, I don't add any more condition to the end of that one phrase. Okay. <laughs> so then I would go on to do the rest of my description. Now, people are kind of, I don't know, torn, I guess, on this. I think this is where people get tripped up. They want to tell people a story, and you don't need to tell people a story. I don't need to be like, great shorts for walking around the town, super cute. Like, someone else is going to decide if these are super cute to them or not. It's not my place to tell them if they're super cute. So what I do is I do it more of like a bullet point format. I don't actually use bullet points, but I just list the things. Just like if you would go to um, a consumer's website, a consumer. If you go to like a company's website and they would say, um, it's usually like details or something like that. It'll, they'll just kind of like list the features. So that's what I do. So mine would look like uh, bright yellow in color, real front pockets, uh, pull on closure, stretchy, a logo on back. Like that's it. Like um, I try to describe it to someone as if it's like, if I'm trying to describe this to someone who can't see, if like a blind person, that's how I want to describe it. So they are bright yellow. They have real front pockets. I don't usually say what they don't have. So in this case, I wouldn't say no back pockets. I would just say real front pockets, uh, pull on closure, stretchy. And that would be pretty basic for something like this. And then um, I would like leave a space. And that's also where I would put in new with tags or new without tags or like new in box, new without box. If it's a pair of shoes, I would put that as my first like bullet point. So then I leave a space and then I, this is once again, this is just how I do it. A lot of people don't do this, but then I would list the materials. So I just like to do this, especially because people are like, oh, well, does it stretch? And that way I can say, well, it has 5% elastane or 5% spandex. And then, you know, a lot of the time I just let them decide if they think it's going to stretch. So in this case, I would put 74% rayon, 4% elastane, 22% nylon. And I would just list it like that. And then I do another space and then I provide measurements. Once again, this is kind of a, some people provide measurements, some people don't. So for me, I provide measurements. So in this one, I would say, I do the title approximate measurements. That's to save my own butt when people are like, well, you said it was 14 inches and I measured it and it's 15 inches. I said, I said they were approximate, not exact. <laughs> I put approximate for that reason because everyone can measure a little bit differently. That's just a CYA, cover your own, you know what? Um, yeah, so that's why I do that. I say approximate measurements. So for a pair of bottoms like this, I would say, um, waist, whatever the waist is, waist, 30 inches, rise, I don't know, nine inches, inseam, four inches, uh, and that's it. So that is how I would write a title or a description for this. Under that, only if there is a flaw or something I need to make note of, I will put please note in all capital letters. I'll say please note, um, item has 
minor stain on back leg or something like that. Please see photo, please see photos. I would put something like that. So in this case, these don't have any flaws. I would completely leave that out. There's no issues with it. And I know looking back, you know, if I said, if I didn't put the please note, whatever, then I wouldn't do it. Same thing if something doesn't have a size. I would say, please note, size is an estimate. Please look at uh, measurements for best sizing or whatever the case is. So that is it. That's how I do my descriptions, my title and my description. So let me give you a different item to give you kind of a better example or another example. So here is a little bit of a different item. All this stuff back here is like larger sizes because I did a plus size whatnot show. So that's why um, that's I'm just pulling stuff off of there to show you. But so here is like a Morona Moto kind of style jacket. So I would start my descript or my title. I would say Morona. What is this even? Maroon? <laughs> Maybe I'd say Morona, red, purple, maroon, wine. I throw in all the different colors, however many characters I have, try to fill it up as best I can. A full zip, moto style, lightweight jacket, size XXL. That's how I would put my title. So then my description would be Morona, red, purple, maroon, wine, <laughs> full zip, uh, moto jacket, size XXL in excellent condition, space. Then I would put my next grouping of words. So this is where I'm describing it. I'd say red slash purple slash maroon slash wine in color, a moto style, real front pockets, full zip. Uh, I'd probably put elastic, elastic cuffs and hem. And that's kind of it. It doesn't really have any other features to it. So that's pretty basic. Then I put another space. I would look at my content. I do take pictures of the tag so they know what the material content is. So I'd have a space, 63% Lyocell, 37% Rayon, space, approximate measurements, pit to pit, whatever the measurement is, length, whatever the measurement is, sleeve, whatever that measurement is. I will note so like this one is like just like a normal sleeve sometimes uh, i'm not good with the terminology so when the seam for a sleeve kind of goes up this way so you don't have that shoulder seam i would measure then from the armpit to the cuff and i would say sleeve pit to cuff whatever it is um and then this one once again has no flaws or anything so i would leave that part out i'm just trying to give you guys a couple examples so you know, hopefully you can apply it to whatever you're selling. So this is a pair of Kamek Kids snow boots. So I would say um, Kamek Kids navy blue, black, insulated snow boots, toddler size nine. Maybe I would add like bungee, something like that whatever in the uh, title, whatever, however much space, like I said, start adding in those um, you know, hook and loop. Anything that's a feature, if you still have space in your title, I would get that like Kamek Kids navy blue black insulated snow boot. Get that in first and then if you have like some extra space before you get to talking about the size, then I would add in like bungee or hook and loop or whatever. Um, and I will put some examples on the screen. I probably already have, <laughs> but just so you can see what it looks like on my actual listings. So like those two items aren't listed yet, but these are. So I can put my actual, uh, I can show my actual listing on the screen or my actual description. Um, and then when I get to my description, repeat the title, say in excellent condition. And then I would start my like bullet points navy blue and black in color, hook and loop closure, bungee closure, insulated. Um, sometimes shoes will say like non-marking sole or something like that. It doesn't say that. Um, or I would say adjustable, adjustable bungee closure. And that's probably it. Now, if these had like an actual name to them, of course, I'd be like Kamek Kids. I don't know. Columbia makes one called like a bugaboot. So it'd be like, you know, Columbia Kids, bugaboot, whatever. Then I would describe it further but i would put the actual like style name first so something like this you don't probably have any kind of materials listed 
Sometimes there might be like, it'll tell you what the lining is made out of. This one doesn't have any kind of tag. So I would completely leave the materials part out. Um, measurements. So for a boot, I might do the shaft height. I, do, I don't measure like the length of the shoe. Um, if it's a heel or a platform, you can measure, say, approximate measurements, platform height, heel height, shaft height. So maybe I do the shaft height. I don't think I did that on kids' boots, but um, you do shaft height and then provide that measurement. And then for our shoes, typically I will say, please note, um, and I will say, see photo for condition. Because shoes oftentimes, like they're gonna have little scuffs or whatever. And you can see that in the photos, but I'm not gonna like notate every single little scuff that's on a shoe. So that's how I would do clothing items and shoes. And I'll show you um, a hard good item in case you're a hard good seller and how I would do that. Okay, so here is an example for hard goods. So these are already listed. They're these two little, what are these Scottish Terrier, I guess, um, little figurines. They are vintage. So when I would list these, now these are listed, so I don't remember exactly how I put it, but I can also add that here on the screen. But off the top of my head, when I'm thinking about it, I would put, this is how my title would go, vintage, made in Japan, lot of two, black, white, Scottish Terrier figurines. Now I don't know like what these are made out of, so I wouldn't say plastic or resin or whatever, because I don't know. These are stamped like made in Japan, so that's how I know. But those are the kind of things that people are going to be looking for. If it's made in Japan, if it's a Scottish Terrier, Scottish Terrier dog figurine, something like that. So once again, I would repeat that in my description. That would be my first line. And then at the end of it, I would say in, I'd say in good condition on these, I think, because there are flaws, I'll show you. Um, so I would say in good condition. Then my bullet points would be lot of two, one black, one white, Scottish Terrier, dogs, um, figurines, it's probably about it. And then I, or made in Japan, I would put that there too, made in Japan. And then I don't know the material, so I'm not gonna list anything about the material. If it were something that had like, was like leather, you could put like, it was 100% leather, or if it says genuine leather, I never guess. I only put it if I absolutely know what the item is made out of. Um, and then for this, I would do an approximate measurements. So approximate measurements, you know, I don't know, what is this, three or four inches? Um, three inches in length and I don't know, two inches in height, whatever it is. And then I would, my next line would be, please note, remember in all capitals, please note um, black dog or black figurine has a chip on the ear and tail as shown in the photos. And then in my photos, um, I obviously would have a picture of the flaw and I usually circle it as well so they know exactly where it's at. So like, if you guys can tell, but this guy's got a little chippy on his ear here, a little chip on his tail as well. So that's how I would list like a hard good. So it's a very simple concept for me. It's very quick and easy because I know exactly how I'm going to um, write the description for each item. And it's just a matter of looking at the item, be like, what, what is this? What, how would I describe this to someone who can't see it? Like if I'm saying, Hey, I saw this shirt. You really, I think you'd really like it. What do you, what would you tell your friend about it? Oh, it's purple. It has long sleeve. I'm thinking about the shirt I'm wearing. It's purple. It has long sleeves. Um, it has a seam detail on the back, crew neck, stretchy, lightweight, you know, things like that. It's just trying to describe the item as if someone couldn't see it. I personally, as a buyer and as a seller, I do not like all the mushy gushy stuff in the middle. I don't care if you think it's cute. I don't care <laughs> if it'd be great on a beach somewhere. That's something I'm deciding just looking at photos and when I'm searching for an item in the first place. I'm not really trying to sell the item to the person in the manner of marketing it to them. I am trying to tell them exactly what they're getting. I'm trying to tell them all the details that I can about that item. Like I said, there's a lot of ways to do it. That's just the way I do it and the way I've been doing it. And it's worked really well for me. That approximate measurements verbiage has saved my butt a couple of times on, um, on Poshmark because I can't say it for 100% that this is the length because I don't know, maybe you're measuring it a little bit differently. Maybe our tape measures for some reason are slightly different, slightly off. I just try to cover myself 
um, in that manner. And it's worked so far. So hopefully this uh, was helpful. If you have any questions about my method um, or anything like that, please leave it in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. You can also follow me over on Instagram. I am at the Cozy Shire. And uh, let me know if there's any other kind of like tips, I guess, or how to's that you are looking for. Um, like I said, I use that format on all of my platforms eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Etsy, everywhere, because every platform has a description section. So I just use that, copy and paste it, and it's worked really well for me. So I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you guys in the next one.